let's start over again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Praise God. Just, and let's just invite the presence of God here today. I don't know about you. I, I, I think I do know about you. It is such a joy to be back. Amen. It feels so good. It just feels so good to be back. And uh, I know that there, there are some that haven't come this morning uh, for various different reasons. And uh, But that's fine. What's important is we're here and that Jesus is here. Amen. Amen. Jesus dwells in the midst of his people and he's here today. He's, he's here today. He's here through those, uh, through those internet ways. He's here and he's here to minister. He's here to be blessed. He's here to be glorified and he's here to bless his people. Praise the Lord. Come on. So let's just enter in right now in prayer and praise. And there's so much going on in our country as well. So we can believe the Lord for to move in this country. Father, we just come before you this morning in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit is here today. God, your presence is in this place. And we worship you. We give you glory. God, we ask that you would have your way right now, right here, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you. God, you're, you're, the, you're the God that's above the storm. You are greater than the storms that are happening in this country. And we just ask you, God, for a mighty move of your Holy Spirit in this country today. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. God, have your way. Accept our praise. We love you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you give the Lord one more hand clap and praise today? Praise the Lord. Y'all sound like y'all ready to worship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hey, let's have some church up in here. Yes. I've been waiting a long time for this. I know y'all have too. <laughs> and I love singing about the blood. That there's power in that blood. This is a question and answer song. I'm going to sing a question. And y'all answer me with nothing but the blood of Jesus. An old hymn, I'm sure most of us know it. It says, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood.
we've already sung that thing. We need to sing again. How great is our God. Every single moment, 
every single minute of every single hour. How great is our God this morning? How great is our God? And I, I don't don't stand here this morning demeaning uh, or belittling or berating Facebook Live. I'm thankful for every single one of our, our viewers, our watchers, our listeners that are watching this morning. I'm grateful that God is with you right where you are. Just as he's been with us. Seventy-five days, I believe it is. Yeah. He was counting. <laughs> <laughs> but he's been with us. Hallelujah. He's been with us. Doesn't matter what comes. Doesn't matter what goes. Jesus Christ has already cried out. It is finished. It is finished. Hallelujah. It is finished. And if you've heard Jesus cry out with a loud voice that it is finished... In John chapter 19 and verse 30, then we can get ready for an Acts chapter 2. We can get ready for a suddenly, hallelujah. We can get ready for a suddenly. How many is ready for God to move? Hallelujah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I got both feet up. Hallelujah. I'm ready. I want to see what God's going to do. I'm believing Him. I believe he's told me years ago that he's going to pour out his spirit one more time. But he's going to pour out of his spirit one more time upon this globe. And it may not look like it in the natural. If you read the news this morning, it doesn't look like God's in control. But our God is in control. Our God is in control. And he told me when I was 17 years old, tell them that the king is coming. open and getting to see our Jesus face to face. He's getting ready. But I, I again, I believe he's got uh, a remnant. I believe he's got a remnant of his people. He always has a remnant. And I believe that I'm looking at a part of the remnant of God. Amen. A true body of believers that wants him above everything else, that wants him above our next breath. Yes. I'll take Jesus. I'll take Jesus. Yes. We're taking Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need prayer this morning, if you need a touch in your body, or you need him to touch your mind, if you need him to touch your emotions, we want to just have you come to the front this morning. And if, uh, yeah, I mean, God can touch you right where you are. I know he touched us at our homes when we couldn't gather together, but his presence was there. If you need a touch this morning from him, it's not about us laying our hands up on you, but he wants to touch you. If you'll go ahead and raise your hand this morning. I see your hand, see your hand, see your hands. If you want to come forward, we'll pray and believe God with you. If you want to stay right there, we'll stretch forth our hands and pray with you. It's just really a point of contact. It's Jesus that's touching us. It's Jesus that's touching us. And Jeff, if I can get you to sing something. There's a healer in the house. There's a healer in the house. Hallelujah. There's a healer in the house. There's a savior in the house. There's a deliverer in the house. Whatever you have need of this morning, Jesus is here. Jesus is here. He wants to touch you. Wants to minister to you right where you are. Father, we ask you right now in the name that's above every name, Lord, that your healing hurts you. Lord, you would set forth your healing. Lord, let the healing hands of Jesus touch your people this morning. Lord, minister to each and every one, Father. Quicken that part that's broken, oh God. Lord, that part that's lame, Jesus, that you would heal. That you would heal and make whole, Lord. Every person that's gathered here, Lord, every person that's watching over the internet this morning, Lord, that they watch later, God, Lord, I thank you that you've chosen not to pass us by, but Lord, your healing hands are poured out, Lord, pour out your healing, in Jesus' name, Lord, Father, Lord, I'm asking that you would touch us physically, in Jesus' name, that you would touch us mentally. 
days. He knows the times. And I know that every day is Pentecost. Every day is Pentecostal Sunday. When you're born again, when you've got the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God is in you and flowing through you, we believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We believe. We know that God wants to move. He wants to move and understand if you're a little timid this morning or you're a little scared that things will get out of order. <laughs> Our God is a God of order. His word says that he is a God of order. But if he wants to go ahead and have an altar call before the preaching even begins, then that's our God. And that's his way. He's more concerned about one soul. More concerned about one soul. Boy, have we forgotten that? He's more concerned about one, and he would do it all just for one. And I'm looking at some ones this morning. I'm looking at some ones. He did it for you. He did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for you. 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 Hallelujah. And I may not know you by name. I don't want to. But he knows you by name. Hallelujah. He knows you by name. He'll pick you up off the sick bed. He'll set your feet on solid ground. Because he's just that good. Hallelujah. He's a God of order. And I want him to have his way. And I'm looking at some folk that want him to have his way. Hallelujah. He's going to have his way. I'll just get out of the way so he can have his way. I think that's where he's getting us. Back to the book of Acts. Back to the early church where they went from house to house to house because of the persecution. But man, oh man, the Spirit of God showed up. He met them every single time. He met them every single time. I know he's here. I know he's going to be with you when you go back home. But man, I just want to be with him. I just want to be with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bob told me just a couple of minutes. plate outside, right out there on the desk. You guys are welcome to put something into it, and I know maybe I should be a little more formal, but you know, he knows what we have need of. Before we even ask, he knows it all together. He knows it all together, and everything that you give, everything that we give, understand this this morning, it's going for souls. It is going for souls. Psalms 2, I said, uh, the Lord would say there, ask of me and I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. Ask of me and I'll give you the heathen for your inheritance. Anybody got some heathen? Hallelujah. Anybody got a, a, some heathen? And you don't have to shout. But <laughs> he wants the heathen to come in. He's asking us to ask him. There's cities all over the nation that need him this morning. There's states all over the nation that need him this morning. There's individuals all over this country that need him this morning. Rioting is not the answer. Jesus Christ is still the answer. Jesus Christ is still the answer. He's still the answer. We'll never get peaceful protests. That's all right. But when it becomes when it becomes to rioting and demonstrating unlawfully, Jesus is still the answer. They need the Lord. They need the Lord. And as you come, I'm going to ask you to come this morning. I just ask the Lord to make it seamless. Just make it seamless, Lord. And just love on somebody, even if it's from a distance this morning. Love on them. We've waited a long time, but it's worth it all. Uh, if I can stand, ask you to stand this morning. We love you all so much. You guys so much. And, uh, over the last uh, 75 days or two months or so, I felt like, uh, well, I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, I feel like I can't do anything for them. stuck. 
church. And if I couldn't come to your house, I would have loved to come to your house. <laughs> and it's coming. <laughs> Boy, put up a sign, beware. <laughs> if you don't want us coming. <laughs> But he's a personal, intimate God. And while we may can't not be with you, he's with us 24-7, 365, 366 right. in a leap year. Right. But as your pastors, please know that that's our heart. That we want to see him touch you. And as much as we, we're touchable and want to be touchable, He's there at 3 o'clock in the morning when we're not. But please know we love you. We love you and we know you love us. And even if you don't, I still love you. I'm going to just open these aisles up. If you could come give your offering, say hello to somebody on the way coming up or on the way going back. We love you this morning. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his heart to the To a Savior rich like me I heard about his glory And his precious blood to the And I repaired it of my soul God. The Lord is good. I, 
I just can't get over that. The Lord is good. When you're in the presence of God, you just can't, you just, that your praise just flows. Amen. Praise just flows. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, if you have your Bibles today, and I hope you do, turn the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. And if you don't, uh, that's, that's fine. Then you can just follow along with us. We don't have it on the, on the board, on the screen or anything. But this is a, a passage of scripture that I believe that you probably read before. Or, uh, Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 35. And reading through verse 41. Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 35. And reading through verse 41. And Mark writing, he said this. He said, at the same day... When the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, he took, uh, he took him, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he, that is Jesus, was in the hinder part, or hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. What an unusual thing for Jesus to, here's a storm, the Bible says that the waves are going into the, into the, into the boat, and here's Jesus on a pillow, the King James says, we'll talk about that in just a little bit, but on a pillow, asleep. I tell you, that's the last time I'll be sleeping right there. But here's Jesus asleep in the storm. And it says, And they awoke him and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no faith? That is, in this situation, why is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and they said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Mm. I tell you, we're almost 2,000 years away from this story that we read today. But Jesus still has command over the storm. When he says, peace be still, there is still a great calm that comes because he's the master of every storm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And this morning, I just want to minister to you for a few minutes. And I'll title my message this morning, Crossing Over to the Other Side. Crossing Over to the Other Side. Hallelujah. Would you pray with me today? Father, we are just so thankful. For your presence here today. Oh, we thank you, Lord. I thank you for everyone that's assembled here. That's in the front row. That's in the back row. That's in the middle. Watching my Facebook. I thank you for everyone. And we ask you, Lord, for your anointing. That there would be an increase. That, Lord, your anointing would flow today. Lord, I ask you for the anointing to help me. Give me the right words to say. And, Lord, your anointing of the Spirit upon us to receive your word today. And God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. And everyone said amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As I begin this morning in the environment that we in with COVID-19 and all that, let me, just, let me just remind you or let you know we got some sanita sanitizing wipes over here, all right? So if you feel like you need to uh, sanitize your hands, whatever, in the midst of the service, feel right at, go, go ahead, right ahead, okay? <laughs> Uh, but in, in this passage that we have read today, it's interesting that there, there are stories, there are events in the Bible that, that, sum, that seem to summarize our whole life. This is one of them that we've read this morning. And there are many others in the Bible, from all the way from Genesis all the way throughout Revelation. It's interesting how God at times would put events in the Bible, Old and New Testament, that those events seem again to, to like a snapshot of our whole life as a child of God. Maybe not all the details, 
Not all the details of our life as a child of God, but as a whole, they're like a, a summary, a concise version of our whole life. Again, this is one of them this morning, but there's others in the Bible. I'm reminded of David and Goliath. The story of David and Goliath, which I'm sure, I hope all of you know, but if you don't know, David, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, he was, this, he was this giant of a man, nine foot and a half tall, a giant man, Goliath. And here is a teenager, a shepherd boy, David. And he's told by his he's told by his father Jesse, I want you to bring some food, some some cheese and bread. That's pizza, maybe that we could bring it. I had some good pizza over the last several days, but anyway, I think I got, still got pizza on my mind. But uh, you, po I posted on Facebook if you don't know that. Anyway, anyway, from sales pizza. Thank you, Lord, for that pizza. But he was told by his dad. Just go bring some bread and cheese to your brothers who are on the front lines. They're soldiers, you're not. They're soldiers, but you're just a shepherd boy. You see, in life, we face those situations. There's somebody, but you're not. You can't be used of God. Others can be used of God. Others can have the anointing on their life, but you can't have the anointing. But they, I get this. That's a summary of a life. That happens to almost everybody. And especially people who, 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 who really have a heart for God, you're going to face that in life. You're going to face that demeaning. You're going to face that either from people, but especially the devil. You're nothing. You don't have what it takes. You don't have anything to give to people or to give back to God as an offering of prayer. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You've got someone on the inside. You've got a treasure on the inside. You've got something to give people, and his name is Jesus. Amen. And you have the hand of God upon your life, and it doesn't matter what it looks like in the natural. If God says go, then you go. Amen. If God says speak, then you speak. If God says pray, then you pray. And know that the heavens are open, and your Father hears your prayer. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. And Jesse was told by, uh, David was told by his dad, Jesse, go. And when he got there, he saw Goliath. And I'll summarize it here. But, Goliath, but uh, in that story, true event. Again, like a summary of our whole life. David realized that no one else was fighting. And he said, is there not a cause? This giant needs to fall. He's, he's blaspheming God. He needs, and he's a reproach against God. And he's a reproach against God's people. Something needs to be done. Again, that's a summary in our life. You and I will feel like that at times. Something needs to be done. And only God can do it. As a child of God, I'm talking about. Something needs to be done, and only God can do it. Oh, are we living in a time like that right now? Come on, somebody. Are we living in a time like that right now? Something needs to be done, and ultimately, only God can do it. There's reconciliation that's needed in our country. And it's all right to protest. And all that is fine. Oh, that is fine to peacefully protest. There's people that are angry. And you know what? The Bible says that anger in itself is not sin. But he said, be angry and sin not. So anger, and anger about injustice is not wrong. Come on now. Anger about injustice that is being done to people is not wrong. Racism is a sin. It is a sin that ought to anger you and I. And it not ought, not, ought not to anger just one race of people. It ought to anger all of us. Especially as, especially as a child of God. And I know that there is corruption in this world. I know, get this, there, there, we just, uh, there is corruption in this country. Corruption in the world. But there's things that need to be done that only God can do. Amen. 
And we'll, we'll experience that in our Christian life. And David experienced that. And just a shepherd boy. And he told Saul. He said, when Saul brought him to him and said, what are you going to do about this Goliath? <laughs> You're just a shepherd boy. And David said, well, let me tell you what happened to me. God, the God that I serve, the God of Israel, he helped me kill a bear with my bare hands. And he helped me kill a lion with my bare hands. And the same God that killed the bear and killed the lion is going to mess up that man Goliath. He's going to kill him. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh my, oh I feel that today. Hallelujah. And uh, we can, you and I can say the same God that killed Goliath many years ago. The same God that died on Calvary and said it is finished. It's the same God that hears our prayers and all of God's people and can bring peace and can bring calmness. Even right here to Murfreesboro today. I was made, we were, Sharon and I, we were made aware that they're having a protest around noon, I think, downtown. And so, you know what? We can pray, Lord, peace, be still. Mm -hmm. There's shop owners all around that square. Mm -hmm. You've been there before. Right. Shop owners all around, and there's a lot of glass. Right. Mm -hmm. Lord, protect, let there be no violence. Can we just pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus? We just take a moment and we pray for that rally that will be in Murfreesboro, Lord, in the Central Square, Lord, but later on. We pray, God, for a peace to come in the name of Jesus. And we take authority over every power of darkness that's in people that would try to stir up hatred and anger in a wrong way, demonic. We take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And we pray for peace to be upon this city and all of Nashville and upon this country in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Praise God. Sometimes you can just, it's all right just to stop and pray. <laughs> But David, he found a river, a type of the Holy Spirit. In that river were five rocks, a type of grace. And he, David had a sling, a type of faith. But there was one rock, one rock that killed Goliath. That's Jesus. That's what he did for us at Calvary. Amen. And he took his faith, he put that rock, Jesus, in his faith. And he used the faith that God used, that God gave him. He used it and whew, And that rock hit the bullseye, right, Goliath, right in the forehead. And Goliath fell dead. And every, again, that is a snapshot in a sense, not all the details, but it's a summary of our life as a child of God. Because every one of us faces giants internally, externally, and the answer is this. There's a river. In the river, there's grace. Wow. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. And every, every stone, every file, every stone will kill a giant. But in that present situation, there's only one that will kill the child. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, his name is Jesus. Amen. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. I want to preach on David Goliath right now. <laughs> but it's a snapshot of our life. And the story that we read today, same exact thing. One story, but the summary, again, of our whole life as a whole. You know, as the story, as this, as this passage begins, Jesus, or Mark, uh, writing, he, he, he said in that same evening, and what, what had happened prior to this event was that Jesus was telling parables, parables that at that moment were going right over the disciples' head. They would understand it in time. But Jesus was teaching the multitudes, teaching the disciples. Uh, prior to this, Jesus was healing people. He was casting demons out of people. And Jesus in his humanity was tired. And he sent the multitudes away. And he told his disciples basically this, get into the boat and let's cross over to the other side. Get into the 
go and cross over to the other side. You see, and, and the other side in this story, it's interesting, from Jesus' words, that's all the direction that he gave. Get into the boat and let us cross over or pass over to the other side. The other side was the goal. It was the end, play, end place. It was the end result of where they would go. They were on the western side of the Sea of Galilee. Then you had the Sea of Galilee in the middle, but then you had the other side. And it's interesting that Jesus in this story, he didn't say where on the other side. He just said, let's go to the other side. And if you've ever seen pictures of the Sea of Galilee, I've had the privilege of being to Israel two times in 2008, 2014. If, if, if I wish God just had some kind of time or a spiritual, you know, travel machine, whatever, we could just snap our fingers and say, Lord, would you bring us to Israel right now? <laughs> yeah. I love it. And by the grace of God, the Lord tarries. We're going to take a trip to Israel at some point. We'd love that. But I've been there, and if you... If you know anything, about, know anything about the Sea of Galilee, it's really not, it's called a sea, but it's more like a lake. It's just a very long, narrow, freshwater lake. Most of the time, you can, you can actually see across it. It's so narrow. And, and, and so when Jesus said, so there's, there's a long shoreline on the other side. Jesus said, let's just go over to the other side. He never said where. And in our life as, as a child of God, that's, okay, our life is that way. Our life as a whole is that way to some degree. But then there are seasons in our life that God will put us in. And when she tells us, I just want you to get leave where you are. I'm, I'm taking you somewhere. I, and it, it, that may be physically, that is, but it's definitely spiritually. I'm, I'm, I'm taking you somewhere. You don't know what it looks like when you get there, but I'm taking you somewhere. So just do what I tell you to do. Get in the boat and cross over. And every one of us, we are either in one place, we are either in the beginning, we're in the middle, or we're at the end of that season. Again, we're either in the beginning, we're in the middle, or we're at the end of that season. But every one of us, and all, all of it is a part of the process of God bringing each one of us individually, even corporately, to where he wants us to be. There's a place spiritually. There's even a place physically, you could say, for this church that God wants us to be. Amen. There's a place spiritually God wants you to be. And, and, but there's a crossing over that has to take place. There's a crossing over again that has to take place. And Jesus said at the very beginning, he said, let us cross over. Get into the boat. Let us cross over. And so they got in that boat and they began to, in that, that, that little boat trip. And we're not told how long it took. But they got, and the Bible calls it a boat, it calls it a ship. It's really a boat. We, what we would think of as a boat. And they got in, they began to cross over. And the Bible tells us. That, that when they got into the boat, get this, when they got into the boat, that there were some other little ships with them. Some other little ships with them. And understand this today, that what that tells us is that you and I are never alone in the process. First of all, know this, that in the process of God bringing us from where he, you are right now to where he wants you to be spiritually more than anything, and even maybe physically, in that process, he is with you in the boat. He's with you today. He's with you in that process. And he'll always be with you in the process. But in the process, there's some other little boats, the Bible says. And again, understand this, that while you and I are in that process, 
what we've been going through with COVID-19, God, Jesus has been with us through it all. Man, praise God for that. Jesus has been with us in the crisis. He's been with us the whole time. But know this too, that I know you know this. There's been others that have been there. Of course, there's others in the same problem. There's others going through the same crisis. There's others actually. There's others that have been that have been hit very hard by it. But spiritually speaking, as we're in that process of God bringing us to where he wants us to be. They're, 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 Jesus is always there, but there's some others that are there with us too. There was others that were, there were disciples that were in the boat with Jesus. And then again, there were some other little boats. And what's interesting, and it, it, it doesn't talk about this in the passage, but what's interesting is that while we're in the process of going to where God wants us to go, to be whom God wants us to be, at the place God wants us to be at, to reach the people God wants us to reach. While we're in that process, He's with us, but then there's going to be some other people with us too. And in that process, there's some other people that are with us that sometimes we don't like. We, 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 if, if it was up to us, we would, we would say, Lord, not that person. <laughs> and let, just take a little way. Just, just take that ball away. <laughs> Far away. But let me tell you this morning, God uses other people in the sanctification process. That's why isolation as a child of God is so dangerous. Can I tell you that? Isolation as a child of God being isolated is so dangerous. You know why? It's because biblically, the, the sanctification process, God uses other people. He uses other personalities that are not our own. Husbands, he'll use your wives. Wives, he'll use your husbands. <laughs> if you're single, he'll use your singleness. <laughs> if you're single, he'll use married people. If you're married, he'll use... Well, no, 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 he won't use that, but anyway. <laughs> well, if I just had that freedom again. No, that's, that's not the Lord. <laughs> but he'll use other people. And other little boats were there. They launched out... And it's interesting that the Bible says that as they launched out, here is this great storm that arises out of nowhere. It was a great storm of wind, the Bible says. A great storm of wind. It was a hurricane-type wind that came out of nowhere. And most of the disciples, the 12 disciples, they were chosen at this time. Most of them were experienced fishermen. Most of them were experienced fishermen. And hear me today. If they, and they read the weather patterns, they knew when the storm is coming. They could tell those type of things. Jesus would actually tell the Pharisees at one point, you know how to read the weather, but you don't know how to read God's word. Wow. Mm. You know how to discern the weather, but you can't discern God's word. Hear me, the disciples were like that. They, they, they could discern the weather. And if they would have known a storm was coming, they never would have gotten into that boat and launched to the other side. Or at least they would have told Jesus, Jesus, uh, let me tell you, uh, I see it over there and I see it over there. You know what? The storm's coming. It's not a good time to get in the boat. But you know what? From the natural perspective, from what they can tell, everything was completely fine. They were expecting a nice, smooth boat ride on the nice, comfortable Sea of Galilee as the nice, fresh breeze <laughs> blowed through their hair. <laughs> but all of a sudden, a great wind, a great wind came. And it hit them so fast and so hard. The Bible says it beat against the ship. It was a, a storm that beat against the ship. It filled the water with the it filled the boat with water from the waves that were hitting it. And I've seen 
fisher boat, fisher boats of that uh, 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 during that time. I've seen examples of what they would have been like. Some of them were big, some of them were smaller. <coughs> But they were not big as we would think of as a, as a fishing boat. And here it was. And these were experienced fishermen. And as this storm came, what happened is they, they looked. And as the, storm, the, the waves were coming in, they, 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 as they looked around, they, looked at, they saw Jesus. Mm -hmm. most, one of the most unusual things I, I, remember, I read in the Bible here they look at you, they look at the storm, seeing all this is coming in, and these are experienced fishermen, and they were like trying, probably trying to figure out, okay, what, what, what are we going to do here? And they look over, and Jesus is taking a nap. <laughs> Jesus is asleep. Jesus is taking a nap on a pillow. The King James uses the word pillow, but that word, that word pillow. And it really what it was, it was not a pillow like we think of a pillow for our bed. What it was, it was a leather cushion. It was a leather cushion that the, that the normally the captain of the boat would actually use. And the Bible says earlier that Jesus was in the hinder part or the stern of the boat. The stern of the boat was the back of the boat where the runner was. And here we to that, and the pillow that he was actually sleeping on was a pillow that was designed for the captain of the boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from what we can tell, bless you, Lord. <laughs> from what we can tell, from what we can tell, I, I, Jesus was not necessarily an experienced fisherman, but they did not expect a storm so much. That they said, Jesus, go ahead and you can, you, you, you just handle the rudder and you just, just go where you want to go. You're the captain. <laughs> You're the captain of the boat. And here it is, they turn their eyes upon the captain of the boat and he is asleep. But the important thing is this. Is that you and I, when we get on it, we get this, is that we need to make Jesus make sure he is the captain of our boat. Mm -hmm. mm. Make sure he's the captain of our boat. He's got his hand on the rudder. It doesn't matter what storm it is. Jesus is the captain. Well, no, he's a carpenter. He's not a fisherman. But that's not the way it is with Jesus. He's everything. I said he's everything that we need him to be. Well, I'm not trying to be pessimistic or anything, but what's happening in the church today is this, that we've, we've compartmentalized Jesus. we put Jesus in a box. And we, we've said, you know, Jesus, he, he'll deal with spiritual problems, but mental problems, that's for a you know, psychiatrist. Or physical problems, that's for a doctor, uh, a, a general uh, doctor. That, that, and medication, that's for the physical. But Jesus, our church, that's only for, quote, spiritual things. No. Well, that's a lie. Amen. Because Jesus handles it all. He can, he's a carpenter, but he's a fisherman. Fisherman, He's a captain of a boat. He's everything and anything you and I need him to be. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And here it is. They saw him sitting on that, sleeping on that pillow. And yet that pillow was just a leather cushion where the captain would normally sit. And he's asleep. Why was Jesus sleeping in the middle of a storm? People have asked, I know I've asked that over the years, why was he sleeping? I know it was for some kind of reason. I know it had to be for some kind of reason. In the natural, some would say it was because he was so tired in the natural, and that might have been that way. He probably was tired. When you read up, we read prior to this, he was probably very tired in the natural. And Jesus, as a 100% man, he needed to sleep at times. He did sleep. Mm -hmm. right. And maybe he just needed a really, really, really good nap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so much so that a storm could take place if he's not waking up. <laughs> That'd be really tired and a really good nap. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Maybe that was it. But I think it goes way, way beyond. I know you know this. It goes way beyond that. Why was he sleeping? He's sleeping because Jesus had nothing to worry about. He was the captain of the boat. And he had nothing to worry about. He had nothing to worry about. Here this morning, that, 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 that place, that position of rest that Jesus was in was a sign to the disciples and also us today. But it was a sign to them that there's nothing to worry about. Because you've heard this maybe a thousand times. But when Jesus is in your boat, you have nothing to worry about. And when you've made him the captain of your life, then he is in control. Even when it doesn't seem like it, he is. In this life, in this world, and right now that we're going through, it doesn't seem like God's in control. But I got news for the devil. God's still in control. God's still God, and Jesus is still Jesus. I know the devil's working havoc, and he's stirring up people. Yes, he is, but God is still God, and he's still in control. Amen. One of the greatest joys that you and I will ever have as a child of God, that in the midst of chaos, just simply knowing that, God, you are still in control, and I'm going to trust in you. You've got your hand on the rudder, and yes, God is allowing evil in this world. Why? It's because the sin that's within man's hearts. God's not the one causing the riots or causing the, the burn down stores or causing people to be killed. No, God's not to blame for that. Sin is. Sin's to blame for that. The devil is to blame for that. Not God, but get the overall God still in control. They said, they woke Jesus up and said, Master, do you know, don't, don't you care for us? How many have ever been there before? You felt like you've been in a storm and you feel like, where are you, Jesus? And you felt like this during this COVID thing. Where are you, Jesus? Why are you not doing something? How come this thing is not ending a whole lot sooner? I know I thought that. Around, around Easter, I thought, uh, of Passover, or so I, I thought, man, why, how, why come this thing's not ending a whole lot sooner? Back in April <laughs> or March, how come it's not it's not ending sooner? But it kept on going and going and going and going. And and but you know, in the midst of it all, again, he's got his hand on the rudder. Right. And he, they said, "Do you not care? Don't you care?" And sometimes we can have that same hard expression to God, don't, Lord, don't you care? We, those words may not come out of our mouth, but it's expressed in our heart and our crying out. And the Lord knows this morning. I just want to encourage you. The Lord knows. He knows the cry of our heart when you and I are in anguish, when people are in anguish. And I believe even people that even don't know God, when they're in anguish and they cry out to God, saying, "Where God, where are you? Mm -hmm. Some people say, God doesn't hear sinners. Well, he heard you and I. Mm -hmm. I said, he heard you and I. Right. He heard Cornelius. Hello, in Acts chapter 10. He heard the Ethiopian eunuch. Mm -hmm. In Acts chapter 8, God hears people. When they cried out for truth, God, he, his ears are open for people who are longing. Who are longing or hungry, needing help. God is a God of compassion. He hears us today. When Jesus, the Bible says, he arose. And the first thing he did is, the Bible says in verse 39, he arose and he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the wind. And it's interesting when the Bible says when he rebuked the wind and said and he said it in the sea, peace, be still. That word rebuke. This is the third time in the Gospel of Mark that that word rebuke is used. And the previous two other times, it was with Jesus who rebuked demonic spirits. The first two times, again, the word rebuke is used. He was rebuking demonic spirits. To come out of people. I rebuke you. Come out. And here it is. Jesus. 
He, rose, he rises and doesn't give a 45-minute message and three in an altar call to the disciples. He just arises, doesn't even talk to them at all. It's interesting. <laughs> Jesus, wake up. I don't even care. He wakes up. I can just see this in my mind's eye. Wakes up. Rebukes the wind. I rebuke you. Mm. Probably in the name of the Lord, I rebuke you. Mm. Peace. Be still. Just a few words. How long does that take? I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Peace be still. All of a sudden, boom. Wow. Calm. A great, not just a calm, but a great calm. It ceased. The Bible says it ceased. And there was a great calm. You see, that word rebuke there is interesting. And even the words peace be still as it's translated in the King James, it's, it's interesting. It's an unfortunate somewhat translation. You read some other, some other translations and they'll, and they'll actually say uh, uh, words like be, uh, uh, be quiet. Mm. Quiet yourself. Be muzzled. Because that's what the words actually mean. The normal word for peace, arene, in the Greek, that's not the word there. The word is actually be quiet. And it's used two times. Be quiet. Be quiet. But the second one has an, is, is, is it has, there's emphasis on it. And, has, and it's normally, those words are normally used in regards to, to, to a, a loud barking or roaring or growling animal. Be quiet. Be muzzled. And shoo. That storm was quiet. The wind was muzzled. You see, the reason why Jesus used those words is because I believe that storm was a demonic storm. Yes, God allowed it. But as they were going over to the other side, there were demonic spirits that were stirring up that waves, those waves and trying to stop the disciples, trying to stop Jesus from getting over to the other side. Why do I say that? It's because the other side they were going to was gathering and there was a demon-possessed man there. Amen. And don't you realize demons talk to each other? And they said, you know what? He, I, I think he's coming over here. <laughs> I think he's coming over here. We, come on, we got to stop this. We, we can't let them. We can't let them cross over. And hear me today. There's some devils. There's some demons that will try to stop. And I'm not magnifying the devil today, but he's real. And the Bible does say that there is a real wrestling that we do with the devil. It's not, a, it's not so much us wrestling against the devil personally, but it's that fight of faith, us standing in the righteousness of Christ. And at times even rebuking the devil, standing against him just like Jesus did. And he rebuked that storm. And why did he rebuke it? Because it was demonically charged. When you and I look at what's happening in this world right now. Hello. Yes, there's peaceful, pro peaceful protests. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. It's allowed. It's lawful. But when people start burning down buildings and there's... There's hatred and there's cursing against against police officers, cursing against a racial thing, and just 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 the hatred that, that, that is there. An ungodly hatred. Get to that that type of hatred is demonically in, is inspired or charged. There's demons behind that. I want, to, I want to tell you again today, there's demons behind that. If you didn't know that already, there are demonic powers behind that. Is God allowing it? Yes, he is. But he's not the one causing it. It's sin. And there are those in this world who have given themselves over to those demonic spirits. I said they have given themselves over to those demonic spirits of anger, of rage, of destroying things. And that's all they want to do. That's all demons want to do. When we look in the Bible, when demons possess people, you know what they do to people? They hurt them. 
They hurt them. And that's when you see that on TV, things, people, things, or people being to hurt, that's demonically inspired from an individual level to a corporate level, to a mass level. It's demonically in charge. Charged. But you know what? As children of God, you and I have the name of Jesus. You and I have the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You and I have been put here on this earth as salt and light in this earth. And I just want to encourage you. When you see those riots on television, don't just stand there. I'm preaching to myself. Don't just look there and say, oh, how bad it is. Or those people just did this. Or those people are this. And then I don't know about all that, you know, those terrible people. No, no, no. Pray. And rebuke the powers of darkness. Take authority over the powers of darkness. Oh, well, that won't do anything. Well, you know what? That attitude is an attitude of unbelief. I said that attitude is in one of unbelief. Yeah. Little old me in my living room rebuking the devil yeah. over what happening in Minneapolis or Chicago or Atlanta or wherever. Yeah. Little old me. That's unbelief. Yeah. Belief says, no, God hears me. God hears me. And devil, you're a liar Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. I remember years ago when there were riots. I forget, I forget which year it was. I forget which year it was. It might have been 2016. Mm -hmm. When Antifa, you've heard of that before? Mm -hmm. that, that group, a terrorist group, really, was destroying things out west and primarily in Seattle and other areas out west. And they were destroying buildings and tearing up things. I realized in my spirit, you know what? That is demonically charged. There's demonically, I saw things, I, yeah, I'm sure maybe you have too, but I saw things that just blew my mind. It was demonic. And realize this, that you know what? Laws, new laws put in place will not change that. New laws, are, 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 if Congress and Senate, if they all come together as one, <laughs> If they all come together as one and they, they agree, you know what? It won't change a thing. Because at the core, at the core of the problem is not a governmental problem. It's not a law problem. It's not a policy problem. It's a spiritual problem. It's a spiritual problem. It's demonic activity at work. And God has called you and I to have, to use the name of Jesus, to use the blood of Christ. He has given us weapons of warfare. I said he's given us weapons of warfare. He's given us weapons of warfare. Jesus rebuked the wind. And there was a great calm. There was a great calm. You and I can believe for great calm. Even if it, whatever, even if it doesn't happen, corp, we can believe for great calm individually. I'll tell you, it's amazing what God can do. That in the midst of a, in, in, in the midst of a riot, you know, what, you know what God can do? In the midst of a riot, as a person is about to throw a rock, the Holy Ghost, mm. the Holy Spirit can bring back the words of a mom or dad or grandmother or grandfather that was spoken to that young person and said, you need to put trust in Jesus. He loves you. And they're about to throw that rock and the Holy Spirit conviction come Amen. over them. Amen. That's what God can do. Amen. That's what God can do. And you and I ought to pray that way. Amen. Holy Spirit conviction come all over them. In the name of Jesus. And God let your glory be revealed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Let your glory be revealed. Because there's no other name. Except the name of Jesus. And every knee shall bow. Before the name of Jesus. Mm. You and I. Have that authority. To what Christ has given us. At the cross. Mm. And there was a great call. Jesus turned to the disciples, and I'm, I'm closing here. Jesus turned to the disciples, and he said to them, Why are you so fearful? Why is it that you have no faith, John? Jimmy, go back. Why are you so fearful? 
Why is it that you have no faith? You see, Jesus, him, just him sleeping, was a picture to them that they had nothing to worry about. And today, where is Jesus right now? Well, he lives in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Paul would say it's Christ that lives in me. He does so by the Holy Spirit. Are you thankful that Jesus is in you today? But the Bible also tells us that he's, he's resting. He's sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for us. Jesus is resting. You know why he's resting? It's because, you know why he's sitting and not standing continually? Even though he did so for Stephen, he stood. That's the kind of faith that Stephen had. Jesus had to stand up for that. <laughs> May Jesus do some more standing. I want to stand up when I, when I cry out to him. But he's seated because his work is done. He's defeated every power of darkness. He's defeated every sin internally, externally. He's defeated the devil. He's defeated every spirit that's in this world. He's defeated every storm that would come our way. He's conquered it all. He's resting. And it shows you and I today that yes, we're to fight. We're to fight the good fight of faith. And we're like that, I mean, watch the movie, but that, that movie War Room that talks about prayer. There's a, even though you and I at times will be in that place of prayer and, the, and we'll feel a war going on and it's not going to be all, you know, nice breeze blowing through the hair. Sometimes it'll be some sweat and tears and some anguish on the inside, some grieving on the inside. At times the Holy Spirit will let us feel the same way that He feels. Mm. And when, when He does, we're not going to have a big smile on our face. We'll be mourning and grieving over the sin in this world and even our own heart. But Jesus said, blessed are they that are grieved, that mourn over sin, for they shall be comforted. Jesus said, why are you so fearful? There's nothing to be afraid of. What we can do, we can rest. We can fight from that place of rest. We can rebuke from the place of rest. We can love. We can be an example. Hello? We can be an example from the place of rest. Thank you, Lord. Stand to your feet this morning as we end. Praise God. Place of rest. This morning, yes, there's chaos in the world, but in our heart, we ought to be rest. Even when we're grieving, get this, even when the Holy Spirit, again, like I said earlier, even, even when the Holy Spirit lets us feel how God feels, grieving and hurt. How does God feel about it? He's hurt by it. You know why? You know why? Because when I look in the, when, when, you want to know how God feels? Just look at the ministry of Jesus. And He looked upon the masses that had no shepherd, and He didn't rebuke them and say, "You bunch of losers, come on, find a good church somewhere for crying out loud." That wasn't Jesus. The Bible said He had compassion on. That's God. That's God's heart. And that ought to be our heart. Place of rest. Resting in Him. Praise the Lord. The Bible would say at the very end of it all, verse 41, and they feared the disciples. They feared exceedingly. You get that? They feared exceedingly. You know what that was? That was actually a healthy fear. And said to one another, what manner of men is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? You know that? You can know interpret that? Interpret it this way. They feared Jesus more than they feared the storm. But in a good way. 
Now, any not now, any time they would come against something and realize, you know what, Jesus is greater. <laughs> It would be shortly after this that Jesus would give them power, the Bible said, tells us in Luke, that Jesus would give these same fearful, afraid disciples, give them power to go out and cast out devils. But how did it all begin? It, it, it began with them going through that process of crossing over and realizing, you know what? This Jesus. Whew. He's got power. He's got power not just to preach well, teach well, not just to cast out demons, not just to, but he's got power to calm the storm. And he's given us power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you bow your head this morning as we end? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you've given us, as you said in your word, you've given us all power. You've given us power over demons. You've given us power over every power of darkness. You have conquered every sin that may be in our heart this morning. You've conquered every power of the enemy. Lord, help us just to trust in you. Let our faith, let our dependence be locked into you, Jesus, into what you've accomplished at that cross. Let our faith be anchored in your promises. And that says that in you that are in Christ that are yes and amen to every question to every problem Lord you're the victor hallelujah you're the victor and we ask you Lord let your great peace great calm fill our hearts let it fill this land in the name of Jesus let conviction come over Lord the riot people who riot let conviction come over them in the name of Jesus we ask it the convicting power of the Holy Spirit let it come over Lord this country thank you Lord and we say it all in Jesus name amen and amen praise God I'm going to ask Jeff to sing a song and I just want us all to sing it together as we praise the Lord thank you now is the time to worship. Come. Now is the time.
is such a blessing to be here, just a blessing to see you. I thank the Lord for what he's done. He's brought us back, and there's more to come. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, if you just want to be seated, if you can be seated just for a moment. I just have a few announcements I should have said earlier, and I'll dismiss you. Uh, next, this coming Tuesday, we will not have or when, we will not have any weekday services uh, in, a, in a location this week. And maybe for the next couple of weeks, we'll still do it over Facebook on Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, but next uh, Sunday, uh, so many of you got, more, if not all of you got the email I sent you. Um, the Lord has blessed us uh, with a building, uh, with uh, a place to lease. Uh, it's on 1124 Brinkley Ave. All right. And I emphasize that point Ave because there's a Brinkley Road. And it will take you somewhere else, all right, <laughs> than where we have. And it's a storefront. It's a storefront area, but it's a good area. And the Lord has blessed us with it. I've looked all over for places trying to find. During this, during this COVID thing, it really made me go out and look harder than I have. And there's a lot of places that, that are for lease for a whole lot of money. <laughs> oh, wow. But this one was within our price range. And so uh, we're going to, uh, uh, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to email you and let you know if, if we're going to be there. Uh, uh, There's a possibility that we may meet at our house next Sunday morning. All right. And I'll just have you to bring, bring a lunch in. All right. <laughs> bring a lunch in. And, um, and I, we've been wanting to do that. We wanted to do that at some point. And then all of a sudden, this came open. How it came open, and we're like, okay, okay, well, we'll I jumped at it. Okay. Yeah. But we were wanting to have something in our backyard, and so, um, uh, but I'll, I will let you know, okay? I will let you know through email, so or on, and I'll put it on Facebook. So um, I'll let you know. All right. So God bless you. Uh, we love you. He loves you. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.